Let's talk about silence and what silence means. That was a silence of one second. Did it feel a little strange? Maybe. So this is what we need to talk about. It could be a very ingrained thing in your background that when someone is silent, that indicates a problem. But that's not necessarily the case. We do find in many societies that there is a greater tolerance for silence. And it's very important that to understand that when we talk about this tolerance for silence, it does not mean that people are more willing to endure the terrible thing that is silence, but rather that silence can be entirely pleasant. And um, we do find in some research that in some societies, silence tends to occur in situations where there is something unpredictable or ambiguous going on, or in situations where there's a difference in the social hierarchy. So there could be, from our perspective, some anxiety or worry associated with that. And yet, though that research doesn't mean that in those societies, silence is perceived as indicating a problem. In those situations that, for example, there's something unpredictable happening, silence is a good option that makes the situation better. So to really appreciate this, I think it's good for us to think about the fact that any social group is kind of like um, a system that has to work together. So is every member of the society doing okay? And are their relationships with each other doing okay? And are the channels of communication open and functioning? So it's actually an important thing to check periodically that the system is working and that the channels of communication are open. Broadly speaking, we can think of two different ways of approaching this maybe the idea that so long as everything's fine, don't say anything, but if there is a problem, then signal that. In the same way as in the dashboard of a car, if it's when a problem occurs that there's a flashing or red light that tells you to take action. So in conversational style, a similar thing would be indicate that something has gone wrong. For example, I did not understand what you just said, or the thing that you said earlier hurt my feelings. You know, if a problem has arisen, mention that. The other way, the other alternative to approaching, um, kind of maintaining the system is keep signaling that there are no problems. Kind of like when people test a microphone and say, testing, testing, one, two, three. I don't need to say testing right now. I just need to check that later on when we will use the microphone, it will be working. Or when geese are migrating and they keep going honk, 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 keep making that noise, which just keeps saying this way to Canada. Yes, we are still going to Canada. Everybody with me, we're going in this direction. Just keep saying that. I know it's more complicated than that. And so, among people, a similarity would be to keep saying things to each other, such as, how are you? Good. How are you? Good. Nice weather we're having. Sure is. How about the game last night? And it never stops in uh, some American English speaking communities. Excuse me, you're fine. Strictly speaking, none of these things are necessary to say, but they keep signaling that there are no problems. So in this situation, if this person does not speak, then, well, the other person will think, oh, crap, we have a problem. Something's going wrong. What is it? But this is the important thing. Over on this other side, if the person does not speak, that does not indicate a problem. It means, oh, this is nice, very pleasant. We're having a quiet moment together and everything is fine. So in some societies, silence can be like this, a pleasant thing. 